everybody. Thank you for tuning in. This is the City of Sweetwater and we're giving a, well, we were intending to do these like three or four times a year, and I think it's been a year since we did these last. So first, my name is Jessica Morgan. I'm the City Recorder here in Sweetwater. We're going to give you an update about the things going on, and there's a lot going on. Um, and I want to introduce John Campbell. He is our new city planner. He's awesome. We're so happy to have him on board. Thank he's, you. He's had so much to do already. <laughs> like, happy to be here. You know, we're so glad you're here because I don't know what we do if we didn't have you. So, Okay, first we're going to talk about some of the stuff Planning Commission has been working on and shout out to the Planning Commission. They've had a busy time here lately. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Lots on the agenda. So John, start with this annexation that we're working on. So um, Monday night at the Planning Commission meeting, there was an annexation or a proposed annexation uh, off Telford Road in Sweetwater, which is behind the Burger King. There's 79.25 acres uh, that requested to be annexed inside the city limits, uh, in our corporate limits. And so that was approved by the Planning Commission to be developed by Eagle Bend Developers for housing for Sweetwater, which is much needed. Right now, that's one of the things that I've heard consistently since being here in January is that we just don't have any housing available or not enough housing. So that's exciting. That'll go to the city board, city commissioners to, uh, to vote on that, to approve that annexation. So that's, uh, that's the first, you know, there are others that, you know, maybe coming down the pike as well, but hopefully getting some more options for, for available housing here in Sweetwater. Tell us a little bit about the types of homes. I think we're familiar with this contractor. They've done some other work here, but like what, what types of homes are they talking about bringing? The, this specific uh, annexation would be single family homes, uh, mid 200s to mid $300,000. So some nice houses, nice dwellings um, for, for people that are moving in with all the new industry and jobs that are coming with Red Stag and others that are coming into our area with growth. It's going to need, you know, we're going to need housing. So these are going to be nice homes uh, for people to kind of, to, to, you know, live in, build a family. And uh, so it's, it's very exciting. Quick access to the interstate for commuters or people working at Red Stack or anywhere else. So Absolutely. It's great. Absolutely. It's great. Okay. How about I heard a little rumble about a Dollar General coming to Sweetwater. What can you tell us? And let's just stick to the facts here. Uh, unlike all the other resources. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to give you the real story. So here you go. Absolutely. So um, I did hear some things, you know, uh, some rumors you would say about what what was coming or what was happening but we did meet uh, Monday night at the Planning Commission meeting and basically what technically what happened was it was a rezoning request so that specific parcel sits on Main Street at the corner of Main and Biggs near the library the old Biggs house sits there I had heard that you know someone was coming in to put up a metal building a Dollar General and tear down the Biggs house and, and, and none of that was true um, Wait a minute. <laughs> Are you telling me that those people who didn't call and ask any questions were wrong? Well, I'll just say that they weren't informed. And so <laughs> I, I'm a big fan of getting all the information and getting all the facts, uh, you know, prior to uh, speaking. It's, it's good, good to gather all the facts and information first. And so that's kind of what we're here doing is just kind of sharing the facts to kind of hopefully put some minds at ease uh, with some of the growth that's coming to Sweetwater because you know, like me, you guys, a lot of you guys are from here and are concerned citizens and, and want, you know, nothing but good things for our city. And that's why we're here. And, and let me just say this too, I'll put in a shameless plug for planning commission, our uh, city commissioners, city hall, anybody that I've come in contact with since being here in January does a phenomenal job for our city. The planning, the zoning, the building codes and requirements, everything is in place for a reason. It's to protect our city and to do things the right way. And so everybody that I've worked with so far has done an exceptional job. You guys should be very proud of them and the job that they do. Uh, so I just want to kind of throw that plug in there, shameless <laughs> plug. But, uh, but yeah, the Dollar General project was actually a rezoning request. That portion of the, the lot that the Biggs House sits on would, would be left alone. The, the company that's, the developers that are proposing to buy that and rezone that, they said that they would leave that house alone. They want to leave that to the city. Um, so that kind of squelches any of that, that it would be torn down. The other part of that is that the, the remaining part of that lot is zoned as industrial use. 
and they were just asking that it be rezoned for commercial use, which fits with the rest of the, you know, the street downtown here uh, would be commercial. So they're just asking to rezone that. Now there are some stipulations that had to be met before that rezoning would take place. That was discussed at the planning commission meeting. They are aware that they're in a floodplain. They have to meet all the requirements for TDEC and FEMA and all those things with the water the way it is in the spring. So they have engineers working on that. So that rezoning is contingent upon all those things, all those I's getting dotted and T's getting crossed. So the, the building that they're proposing, if that rezoning takes place, if they can build on that lot, would not be your typical metal building that, that you think of when you hear Dollar General. They are aware that they're in a histor historic zoning district, so they know that it has to meet the facade of downtown. And so they're proposing an all brick building with nice lighting and things. And, and I'll show you, I don't know how, how well you can see it in the picture, but this is kind of what they're proposing, an all brick building uh, with nice lighting. So you can see the different sides and elevations. It's all brick. Uh, it wouldn't be the big, bright yellow neon signs that you think about. So uh, if you've ever seen uh, some of their other work would be in Farragut and uh, Teleco Village area. And so uh, they, they want to blend in as well as they can with downtown Sweetwater. And they've been very forthcoming, very cooperative with everything that, the, you know, that we have asked them to provide for us or, you know, as far as regulations go. So, um, I just hope that you know kind of puts some folks mind at ease a little bit and then you know i i know sometimes when you hear things you, you maybe you know we, we assume the worst or jump to conclusions so you know if everything goes smoothly for them i believe the product that you would see there would be something that would fit in our downtown it would be something that we could be proud of yeah i agree they're gonna do this they actually came down that we they called multiple times had phone conversations and then they've been down twice in person now um, and each time they've been open to our suggestions and we have a sidewalk grant that's going down through there they're going to work with us on that on donating the easement for that sidewalk we're hopeful that a commercial structure there whether it's dollar general or something else that a commercial structure there will help tie in all of main street especially once we get that sidewalk in to kind of extend main street make it a little bigger make it go all the way down on north highway 11 um, to some of those other businesses towns toffee and some of those other things down there that have been really good for the city and, and brought people into town. Um, I also would encourage people to just call and ask. We have three staff members in planning, development, and tourism, so we're fully staffed down there now. If you all have a question about something, call them and ask them. And if we know, and if we're allowed to tell you, we'll tell you. Like, we want to get accurate information out there, so, and we're, we're not offended by questions, um, especially if they're because you're trying to get the facts right, which is always great. Absolutely. And there's a lot of work that goes into this. I mean, people don't realize, we don't control whether businesses come to town or not. All we can do is make the environment inviting and hope that they want to come here. And like John said, part of how we do that is by making sure that we have codes in place that will provide safe structures for our citizens and also maintain the historic integrity of downtown. So really what the city's facing on this Dollar General issue, it's not whether to let a Dollar General come in or not. We're rezoning. So the question to the city and the planning commission was, can this be M1, which it is now, industrial, to put an industry on that side? Or should it be C3, which is commercial, um, which is what, you know, most of the rest of the downtown district is, so. That's correct. And Planning Commission did recommend to rezone that to C3. Um, if you have strong feelings about this one way or the other, and you wanna make it public, you can email those in to be read aloud at a public hearing. Our emails, you send it to me, jmorgan at sweetwatertn.net. And the public hearing will actually be held during the June 6th city board meeting at 5 p.m. So if you want to show up in person and make a comment, that's the time to do it. Every ordinance that we have, which rezonings are always as an ordinance, we're required by law to hold a public hearing between the first and second reading. So typically the way that works is we have a first reading and then the following month we will have a public hearing and then we'll have second reading at the end of that meeting after the public hearing. So you have opportunity to speak to that. Um, just as a reminder, Planning Commission is a meeting that is a business meeting and so are city board meetings. So if you're trying to get on those agendas to speak, you have to go through a process ahead of time to get on those agendas. But during public hearings, anybody can speak. You're allowed to show up, say your piece, as long as it's on the topic that we're having the public hearing on. So that's just a quick general government reminder. It's always been that way. I've been here 16 years and that's the way it's been ever since I've been here. So, okay, and some other things on uh, Planning Commission's radar, we had we recently rezoned a property 
on High Street between Willow Creek and Plaza 68, right before John came, we rezoned that for um, to provide some townhouses because there are certainly people in town that would like to have places to rent. And so those townhouses have been rezoned for that. And I think they're working on site plans and things to submit for that. The same owner of those townhouses that requested that rezoning has requested an additional rezoning for a property out Highway 68. Tell them a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, Tanner Ermac is the name of the developer that proposed um, rezoning or had requested rezoning on this particular property. If, if you're going out 68 toward the interstate, it's on your right just before the Western store. It's up on that hill top there and it stretches all the way back to Monroe Street. And so the proposed, the initial proposed site plan is for um, R1, R2 housing. So that would be basically your single family homes again. Um, you know, nicer single family homes, but then also um, mixed in with some duplexes as well. So the intention uh, would be to sell those duplexes. And so that just gives more housing options again for Sweetwater. So another development coming in, it, it would be again, zoned for R1 single family homes, mixed in, sprinkled in with some duplexes that would, the intent would be to sell those as um, residences. So when I think sometimes when people hear, um, housing is coming in and you know they, you know you kind of get a little bit uh, leery about what may be coming or you know some things may you know again make assumptions about you know uh, different types of uh, apartments or housing type things but these would be single family residential homes and duplexes is what he's proposing there uh, and again that that passed approval by the planning commission it will now go on to the city council uh, for approval on two readings and then we also had a rezoning request for the old hall salvage building to put a manufacturing facility in there it's zoned commercial right now that's a very large building it would take a very large commercial retailer to to want to use that building so it may be more appropriately zoned for industrial um city board that was recommended by planning commission so city board will be looking at that in the next two meetings again rezonings have two readings because it's an ordinance and we'll have a public hearing in between but that could bring potentially 150 jobs to sweetwater for that facility so a lot going on in that planning commission meeting. A lot going on. It's busy, but it's uh, it's exciting. So you know, if, if you're from here and or if you're moving in here, uh, it, it's an exciting time. And I think you know we're, we're experiencing growth, and um, you know we're seeing that uh, not only with the housing, but also in industry and businesses, commercial, retail. Uh, it just seems like everything is growing, and people want to be in Sweetwater, and that's a good thing. Uh, and again, it kind of goes back to what I said before about. Um, all of those parameters and guidelines that have been put in place and the foresight that you know your city leaders have had over the years to do this the right way uh, because you know we want to grow we're for growth but we also want to maintain that you know that hometown feel because that's what makes Sweetwater the sweetest street in Tennessee oh, right you know I you got that home, yeah you know I, I had to throw it. that in there but but you know we want growth and we want it to be good growth and we want it to be the right way we don't want to outgrow our roots uh, so i believe we have those roots and a good foundation and it's just an exciting time and the thing that people care about more than anything is restaurants or maybe that's just me i don't know no, i like food <laughs> so we we have some good news on the restaurant front we have um a local person looking at a restaurant we have two other potential new restaurants that we don't have right now coming into town so once all, everything is settled and signed on that we'll be very happy to announce those things we know everybody is always wanting to know about restaurants absolutely so and in the meantime don't forget the more you support our local restaurants that are already here uh, the better those demographics are the better those sales tax numbers are the more restaurants will come here so you know support your local ones and watch it grow yeah, I do want to say that. We do have some some really good restaurants and places to eat here. You know, I think that's a lot of time a topic of discussion. You know, sometimes you see, uh, well, we don't have anywhere to eat. Well, we do have places to eat. We have some good places to eat. But I think the more variety you have, you know, the more options you have is a good thing. And so the ones we have currently are, are really good places to eat. And uh, often they're at capacity. Yes. Like, I mean, lines out the door because, you know. Absolutely. And so... We want to just provide more options, more opportunity, you know, for different places to eat, some variety and things like that. So kind of a shout out to the existing restaurant owners in here. You guys are doing a great job. But mm -hmm. hopefully Especially we'll... these last couple years. Y'all have y'all are rock stars. Absolutely. But yeah, hopefully have some more options coming really soon. Okay, so of course, part of what's fueling all of this growth, a major part, not the only thing, but a major part, 
is the Red Stag Development and Cherahala Holdings, which is another one of those LLCs that is, um, has some similar ownership to Red Stag. So connected to that project, but separate. So let's talk a little bit about Red Stag. I don't, I mean, they have done such a wonderful job communicating. I cannot say enough about this group. Um, Molinar Gross has been fantastic. They keep us in the loop on everything. They'll be doing uh, a groundbreaking ceremony soon or a, a ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, John, tell us a little bit about timeline-wise when they hope to be operating. Well, um, as far as the, the, the overall scope of things, the project is on schedule, uh, and, and I believe uh, the reason that they're on schedule, because they're like everybody else, they're dealing with, you know, supply chain issues, uh, delays, you know, trying to get what you need to complete a project is really difficult. But again, I think the reason that they've been able to stay on schedule is the foresight and the pre-planning that went into this. And that's what we've seen with, with Jordan Mollenauer, with Red Stag Project, is a lot of forethought, foresight, a lot of pre-planning so that the process goes smoothly. And they've been very cooperative as far as working with us. They've been very open uh, as far as communicating with the city and what their intentions are and how they want to do things. They want to be a good partner with the city of Sweetwater, and they have been. So mm -hmm. can't say enough about them uh, there. As far as when they would begin operations, um, they're hoping to begin operations by the end of August. I spoke with the foreman on the job out there last week. Um, the, if you drive out there, you can see the building is massive, uh, and they're moving along uh, really quickly with that. Uh, but they also have demands. They have you know suppliers and, and people that want things shipped, and so in order to meet those needs, they proposed going ahead and, and sectioning off half of the building to begin operations by the end of August. It'll be complete, it'll be safe, it'll be sprinkled, all those things. It will have to meet all those codes, but to begin um, loading, unloading, shipping some items out of half of that building as they continue to build out the second half. And uh, so that, that they're on schedule to do that. Hopefully the weather will hold out for them and let them continue to work and complete that uh, as quickly as possible. By end of August, they're hoping to be operating out of at least half of that that building so that's exciting I, I i i second what you said about jordan and the whole team every single person i've met with red stag is the highest class professional humble kind generous person they have sponsored sweetwater high school's prom two years in a row now they have sponsored the blooms and bluegrass festival they're sending down their champ champion award-winning barbecue team to be involved in the blooms bluegrass and barbecue festival again this year so um they're just great community partners and we're so happy that it's them that got that property because I can't imagine anybody doing it better than them or being more open. I mean, you guys can drive down there. There's a banner that has their phone number on the side of it if you have a safety concern or questions. I sent citizens directly to the, the main guy to answer questions and um, he gets back with them and um, they've been, I, I just can't imagine anybody better coming in. And let me point out, we give tax incentives. We can give tax incentives. We have offered them to companies much smaller than Red Stag. Red Stag has not taken the first dime of tax money. They are not receiving any incentives for this project. They are not taking any government incentives for this project. They are paying for it 100% privately. Um, and yet, they are still so willing to communicate with us, to talk to us about their hiring plans and their recruiting plans and all of the things that we are interested in and hopefully can help them with. Um, so they've been wonderful. We couldn't ask for a better company to locate here. Absolutely. Not, not only them, not only Red Stag, but the contractors that they've chosen, the subcontractors, anybody that we've had communication with, whether it's engineering firms or the actual builders, have just been very open and willing. Anytime that you know uh, they need anything or they want to share anything, they're very open about contacting us and letting us know. They said our door's always open. Anytime you want to come on site, you know, just come down and, and you know, grab the keys to the side-by-side -side and, and take off. So their, their contractors and their subs have been very open and willing to, uh, to allow us to come in and, and obviously inspect what they're doing and kind of have, uh, have some, I guess, eyes on the project. So hats off to them as well. Yeah, we're very appreciative of them. Um, so across the road, they request under Chair Halo Holdings some rezoning, which has been through uh, Planning Commission and now City Board. Um, so it's official and rezoned for uh, two commercial sites, basically on the dinner bell side of Oakland Road. Um, and I think right now they're marketing it to various companies for commercial 
um, intent and then they've got a couple lots on the back that will be light manufacturing and they're planning on ground leasing that so if you know a developer or somebody who's interested in that they've already had so many phone calls trying to get that property um, trying to be able to ground lease from them but um, we're excited that they're taking that that side too because we know it's going to grow and with the amount of trucks that they have coming off the interstate every day there's going to be some traffic there and they're doing all the things with TDOT that they need to do which is a slow process I mean <laughs> it is a slow process um, but they're doing a great job tying up all those things also a um, couple of other things John I don't know if you remember this or not but the city got a dog park grant we yep. actually got news that we got it last year um, but we just got our final approval last month so they are coming in our april 25th city board workshop at five o'clock to present our twenty five thousand dollar check for our dog park grant i know i've seen people and had a couple of phone calls about people asking so we are moving forward with the dog park it's going to be at the back of the recreation complex on the softball side of the recreation complex there's an area back there between the softball field and the multi-use field that we built a couple years ago there's an area that we can use for the dog park um, 25,000 sounds like a lot of money but the city will be paying a little bit of match funding on that also um, we have to get water infrastructure there because the doggies have to have somewhere to drink and we'll plant some shade trees and put some little structures in there for the dogs to play on we are going to separate large and small animals um, and other than that, it's going to be play at your own risk. It's up to you to make sure your dogs are vaccinated. We'll put signage out there and all the things that are recommended from a liability perspective, but um, it's not going to be staffed by the city. We're not going to put a person out there to sit all day at the dog park, but we hope it's an amenity that the community can enjoy and embrace and will be almost all funded by uh, grant funding from a private organization, not tax dollars. So thank you, Randy Boyd Foundation, for that dog park dash grant. And we'll be seeing more of that happen over the next few months. And John, we also have a bunch of events coming up. We do have some events. I do want to say, uh, you mentioned shade trees there. I believe there have been a couple of shade trees planted there already, thanks mm -hmm. to our tree board. Yay! Shout out to the tree board Good there job, tree and board. Uh, a grant that was uh, given to them, a tape grant. Um, so yeah, good job planting some trees out there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was grant money as well. So love it. Yeah. Uh, May 6th and 7th, we've got Bloom's Bluegrass and Barbecue downtown. Our barbecue competition this year will award one golden ticket to a competitor that wins best all around to go to the World Food Championship. So uh, Sweetwater City, Madisonville City, and uh, Monroe County Tourism all partnered together to get golden tickets for the World Food Championship. So one of those winners will be going there. So that's exciting. We do have the carnival coming back. It'll be in the same spot as it was last year. And I think that added so much to like the ambiance of downtown to have that big lit Ferris wheel in the background. So that'll be behind the depot. That'll be exciting. Um, and we have wonderful music lined up by the best volunteer, Danette McCrary. She has recruited all these bluegrass bands to come play Friday and Saturday. Um, the website's Blooms, bluegrassbbq.com. If you want any more information, there's a schedule and events, a map. Thank you so much to all of our sponsors. We are still taking sponsorships for one more week. Um, if anybody wants to sponsor that and get their name on the banner and get their name out there, it's a great opportunity. Also, we're planning our normal 4th of July celebration. It'll be on July 4th, which is a Monday this year. We've got some other stuff coming up later on in the year, including October 1st, the Knoxville Track Club is coming back again. They did their marathon, their spring marathon. They weren't able to do it in Knoxville last year, so they did it here in Sweetwater, and it monsoon. It was an absolute storm. The whole, we were drenched, and they still had 500 runners registered. It was amazing, so that's great. They're partnering this year with Kiwanis Club, uh, and the normal Rocky Top Run is going to be a joint effort on October 1st between those two clubs. So if you're a runner, mark your calendars now, uh, October 1st in downtown Sweetwater. That's going to be a great day, too. Oh, goodness. I think that's everything on my notes, John. What else do we want to tell them? Anything, anything big coming up that we haven't covered? I don't think so. I think we've gotten the gist of it. Visit our website, sweetwatertn.net. It's got all of our contact information. It's got our emails. You can email us, you can call us, you can ask whatever questions you want to ask. Um, we got a lot going on right now. There's just, it's just a busy time. Yeah, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Busy time being Sweetwater, but it's, again, it's an exciting time. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And we have a really good team in place. Thank you, John, for being here. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Thank, thank goodness for all our mayor and our commissioners for always being supportive and progressive and trying to move to that next level and letting us apply for grants and spending time telling you all what's going on so yeah uh, and i'll say this the, the the people that are moving in here uh whether it's they're calling 
you know, our office looking for space to build or to, to locate or, you know, just passing people walking downtown in and out of the shops. The people that are moving in here from out of the area have nothing but, you know, good things to say about our town. Um, I can't, you know, tell you how many times people have said that. We just love it here. We just love it. We moved here from California or we moved here from Wisconsin or wherever it may be, but just the positive things that they say about Sweetwater. And I believe that, again, it just kind of speaks volumes to our, you know, our small town roots and that hometown feel. It's, it's attractive to everybody. And a great way for people to get involved, if you're not already, is become a member of our Merchants and Property Owners Association. That's We're going to share this link on their page. We just had a SAMPO meeting this morning at 8.30, their quarterly meetings. Our next meeting is July 21st here at City Hall at 8.30 a.m. It's open to the public. You're more than welcome to come, but we give these kind of updates every meeting. Um, we'll try and do another video for you in July, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> if we can remember to do it and get the time to do it. So, um, Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.